This video is very specifically gonna unpack seven really amazing icebreakers for college students. Depending on where you're getting them, if it's year one, they're nervous as heck, they want to appear cool, they want to be liked, but they're also really in an uncomfortable spot, everything's unfamiliar, and so uh, facilitating an icebreaker with people who are scared uh, is it takes some really deep skill. Take my advice on this, ditch the word icebreaker and replace it with connection before content. And here's why, for me, connection before content is uh, different than an icebreaker because it connects that acti activity, exercise, conversation, connects to why the person is there. And so if they're at a college orientation or they're coming, walking into a 400 level class and you wanna do an icebreaker with them, they're there for a reason. They're not there for the icebreaker. They're there for that topic. They're there for that content. You've landed in the right place though because I used to, as a college student, used to lead college student orientation. I then trained orientation leaders. Um, I ended up, uh, after starting uh, my company and writing a book called Ask Powerful Questions, ended up uh, keynoting the conference NODA, where a thousand directors of student orientation get together every year and led an icebreaker with a thousand of them and personally have facilitated uh, many, 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 many tens of thousands of college students in both small groups and groups up to 1,000, 2,000, and even a convocation with 6,000 students at the University of Wisconsin. In other words, my promise to you in this video is I'm gonna give you seven icebreakers that actually work really well and have been tested a bunch of times on college students. And you'll notice a difference between the ones that I share. So the first one I'm gonna share is called in the manner of the adverb. And then we're gonna talk about a looking forward to list and then a to be versus to do icebreaker. And so each one is a distinct uh, concept, but you'll notice that some are designed to be fun and playful and uh, have some laughter and create some movement because that's important for college students because they got jitters. <laughs> and so getting some action um, is useful. Also so one of the things that many college students have told me is thank you for treating us like an adult and not like a kid. A phenomenal icebreaker for college students also has some meaning and depth to it as well. And so the seven that I share will oscillate between uh, fun, playful, exciting, and deep and meaningful. And you can choose which of them or a combination of them that you wanna use for your own context. So your icebreaker ideally connects to the purpose of why you're there. And so this uh, first activity called in the manner of the adverb uh, is really great for connecting to purpose because all you're doing is whatever you're gonna be doing anyway, you just invite people to uh, have the conversations or share or write or whatever content you're gonna be delivering. You have them do it just in the manner of the adverb. And so you have them do it quickly. Remember adverbs are uh, things that end in L-Y. So it's quickly, slowly, funnily, sluggishly, happily, right? And so whatever exercise you're gonna be inviting people into, invite people to just do it in the manner of a particular adverb. And you can change that as you go. And so all the rest of the six exercises that I'm gonna share with you, you can do in the manner of the adverb. It's almost a lens or a filter for the rest of these exercises. Second icebreaker um, is a really awesome exercise to honor the fact that in your group of college students, you got a whole bunch of introverts and a whole bunch of extroverts and everybody would benefit from a little bit of reflection time thinking before they speak. This concept came to me from an author colleague named uh, Helen Tupper, and she called it a looking forward to list. And I love um, this idea of as someone's beginning college or as they're in their college career, they've got all this stuff to look forward to. And sharing and bonding with people over what people are looking forward to, either in the, the near future or the distant future, is a really phenomenal way to connect and kind of intertwine each other's futures as college students. And so inviting people to take 10 seconds and either write physically a list of three things that they're really looking forward to or just mentally come up with one, two, three things that they're really looking forward to. And then only after you give them that 30 seconds to think or write, then get them into groups of three to share the three things that they're looking forward to each. My invite as a facilitator would be after each of them share those three things, um, give the chance for the other two people in their group to ask some questions about those three things. And so you're just adding enough structure to say, and you're assuming the social risk for college students to share something that's meaningful and important to them that they're looking forward to, and giving them the conversational structure to be like, 
frankly, hey, don't be a dud. You should ask a question after somebody shares that too. And that is a really useful lens to apply to create a meaningful conversation, but to remove a lot of the risk from it. Icebreaker number three is my absolute favorite. I have not had it fail. You'd have to try to make this activity not work. Um, and it is a question swap. Um, I use these uh, We Connect cards, which I created way back in the day when I was actually leading groups and programs with college students. Um, and they're really simple. Here's a big version of them. Uh, really simple cards. There's a question on one side and an action, yeah, on the back. And you can get a free printable version in the uh, description, um, or you can actually get a box shipped to you as well, and there's probably links for that. Um, but the cards are color-coded, and this is really important. Yeah. The cards are color-coded so that uh, green questions tend to be fun and light. Purple questions tend to encourage some level of self-reflection. It's a little bit of a hug to the introverts in the room, or a not hug. And the blue are questions that go a little bit deeper. And so that color code is important because it gives students choice in what types of conversations they have. So the way a question swap works is, uh, Steven, you're gonna demonstrate this with your hand. Ready? So I'm gonna give everybody in a group a card. And I've done this with 6,000 people uh, in an arena, and I've done this with 12 people in a 400 level class. You're gonna give everybody a card, and I'm gonna pair up with Steven. Can we get your hand in here? Oh. There's Steven's hand, yes. Okay, so Steven is going to uh, ask me the question on his card and I'm gonna answer. And then after that, I'm gonna ask him the question on my card. And we're gonna, after we have that little conversation, we're gonna swap cards, toss our hand in the air, signaling that we're looking for somebody new. We're gonna walk over, pair up with them. And so it's this self-facilitating, self-swapping exercise that allows people to connect for as little amount of time or as much uh, time. And this is really important because most icebreakers, you're like, Here's the question, everybody to get into groups of three and talk about it for five minutes. The problem with that is that some groups finish in one minute and then they just deal with awkwardness for four minutes. And some groups need 15 minutes because they just met their soulmate. And uh, the question swap allows for that complete flexibility in a group so everybody can be in the types of conversations they wanna be in and also um, be moving around. Now, the added uh, layer, the action on the back of the cards, there's all these different um, hand gestures, motions, etc. I put those on there when I designed these cards originally um, because I was facilitating actually young groups. When I was in undergrad, I had a summer job facilitating adventure trips for uh, teenagers. And when you get two, two neat teenagers to break the ice and pair up and talk with each other, it looks really awkward. And so I answered that with just saying, uh, what could I put on the back of this card? What could I put in between those two people to make that go better? And so the action on the back of the card, uh, you can invite people if you want to, to say while you're listening or while you're speaking, feel free to do the action on the back of your card. And what it does is just gets a little bit of jitters out for folks um, and cre typically creates a little bit of laughter and laughter is often nervousness leaving the body. This next one is not a conversational icebreaker. It's just uh, a really wacky, laughter-filled, fast-paced um, activity. And using actions on the back, so you got everybody have a card, forget the question side. Here's the goal, ready? Um, uh, this activity is called mirror neurons. Mirror neurons, it's like when you watch a sad movie and you cry, that's your mirror neurons, your empathy neurons activating. Like you're not actually in that movie, that thing is not happening to you, but just by association, the same neurons are firing in your brain and makes you cry. And so this kind of plays off that idea in a really fun, playful way. So the exercise is um, you tell a whole bunch of college students that your goal is to earn the most points. All of a sudden your ears perk up. The way you earn the most points is not showing your card to people. You pair up with somebody, lock eye contact, just for a quick second, and on the count of three, three, two, one, you do the action on the back of your card. And there's 10 different actions on the back of the card. So in a group, you got a one in 10 roughly chance of pairing up and having the person do the exact same action. So many times people will pair up and somebody will do this, somebody else will do a leg stretch and they won't be a match. And you'll just say, ah, See ya, and they go to the pair up to the next person. But I can tell you from experience, what happens when somebody gets a match, 
that counts as a point and they're, they explode. You don't even have to tell them to celebrate, but you can say, when you find a match, immediately high five somebody. And as soon as you high five somebody, that becomes the point. Quick side note of inclusion and accessibility around this activity. Some people can't walk. Some people can, like the actions on the back, there are a small percentage of people that may not be able to participate in that. And so just mention it, just call it out to say, feel free to adapt the exercise to your ability level. So if you don't wanna get up and do a leg stretch, just show your card to the person, match that card up. And if you get a match that way, still lands. Still same effect, same idea, same concept, but allows everybody to be included. While I've led uh, groups with students that are blind, with students that don't have legs, with students that can't hear, I'll just say the accessibility note. In this video, I'm not gonna um, unpack the way to make this accessible for every single person on earth because it would be a 90 minute video. But my invite is just to be, with any of these exercises, make sure that you're paying attention to who is in your group and adapt your exercise to fit them. And so if you know uh, this is a group of really introverted engineers, first of all, I may not choose this exercise. Second of all, if I do it, I might do it at a lower key level. Rather than ramping it up and making it really fun and playful, I might just say, your goal is to earn as many points as possible. The way you earn points is by matching up with somebody, doing the action on the back, and if you get a matching action, you earn a point, you go to the next person, you have two minutes, go. Or three minutes or however much time you wanna give them. If you want a um, written more cohesive version of this, um, in the link below, there's a whole bunch of free resources that you can uh, access. One of them that comes in our the physical toolkit that's packed um, into a nice little box. There's a roadmap with a bunch of QR codes, six different activities, short written descriptions, and video demonstrations and tutorials of them happening. And so if you find that useful, feel free to check out the uh, link in the description. The next exercise I just call uh, question shopping. And this is a lower key kind of slow motion version of the question swap where um, ideally an icebreaker just assumes the social risk for somebody to get into a really phenomenal conversation with somebody um, that almost replicates the like late night in a dorm room, just really connecting with somebody over something they care about um, or something that's important to them. And so the way that you can guarantee that that happens is if you take a bunch of really good questions, scatter them out over a table and invite the group to come up and choose a question they would love to ask and answer and then have them sit down next to somebody and ask and answer that question. And so this is a really great unofficial start, the question shopping. You got a table like this with a bunch of questions set out so that when people walk into a room, you say, hey, welcome, so glad you're here. Just choose a question you'd like to ask and answer and just go sit down next to somebody who you haven't met yet and ask and answer that question. Um, super simple, low effort, low key exercise. What it does is create what Jennifer Stanchfield, one of my favorite facilitators, would call um, shielded discussion. And it's this idea that, oh, I asked you this because the card allowed me to, not because all of a sudden I'm being vulnerable um, or oversharing or anything else. And so you, it assumes the social risk for people to jump into a good chat. The last one I think is, um, one of the most powerful things you can do at the beginning of a class or the beginning of a semester. And that is this idea that I uh, stumbled on uh, thanks to my late uh, co-author, uh, Will Wise. Will Wise now wrote a book called Ask Powerful Questions. And Will was always very um, intent about who he was being, not just what he was doing. And I think this uh, is really useful tool and skill to teach to college students. And so um, I call this exercise the to be versus to do list. And Simply, it's giving the group three to five minutes to just journal and write down two lists. What are things they want? And I would only tell them one at a time. So first, write down a list of all the things you wanna do while you're in college. I'm not gonna ask you to share this list. In fact, I really don't wanna see this list. <laughs> write down all the things you wanna do uh, while you're in college. So you have them do that, give them two, three minutes to do that. And then you say, that's nice. I would argue that what matters a whole heap more than that list is not your to-do list, but your to-be list. Who do you wanna be while you're doing all of those things? Do you wanna be generous? Do you wanna be compassionate? Do you wanna be caring? Do you wanna be mean? Do you wanna be, and just take a minute and reflect on who you wanna be while you're doing college. The reason I put this in the category of icebreaker is um, this, I think in a psychologically safe way, allows someone to cut to write to their values. What do they care about and value most? And so when you have people reflect and write this down, get clear about it, and then get people into small groups to actually go around and share and discuss both some of the things they wanna do and some of the things they wanna be, 
what you've done is created a super personalized conversation that only has content that that person actually cares about. You almost didn't choose what they were gonna talk about at all. You just gave them barely enough structure to have a phenomenal conversation about what they value and what's important to them. And that is gonna accelerate connection by about 10 times speed. Now, this like talking head video, me unpacking this is useful, but what's really useful is watching me actually facilitate one of these exercises. And so if you uh, like this video and some of the ideas, you'll love this video uh, where I actually facilitate what I consider to be the best in-person group activity, or I call it an experiment. And you can click probably somewhere around here and access that video. Have an awesome day.